victory in World War II. 75 years ago today, Europe bursted with excitement as victory over the Nazi regime of Germany was signed. The unconditional surrender of the Nazi high command was signed in Berlin as the United States and the other allied forces brought a close to the great conflict in Europe. No more bombs would be falling, no more lives destroyed, no more sons and daughters lost in this battle. Victory had come at long last to a war-weary Europe. Celebration and jubilation broke forth. However, while they were safe in Europe, President Truman would declare this in the United States. Today is a victory, yes, but a battle halfway won. We have joy and rejoicing, but there was still the Pacific Theater and the Empire of Japan to be defeated. You know, I really believe today, born again friend, that we have joy and rejoicing in Jesus Christ as our Savior, but because we're living on the earth, because we're here in this fallen, broken world, we have a war half won. As I was reading the book of Revelation this morning, the Lord just began to burn in my heart and show me some things that weren't about the end of the age and the sign and this piece and that piece and all the other things, but I, I really could pull in and feel the hurting and the loss of God's man who would be used to bring us the revelation of Jesus John. Reminds me of a young man I knew years ago. He came to the Christian school where I was the principal and he had had a terrible accident the, the spring before he came to our school. See, he rode his bike home from school every day and there was a large construction site that he had to ride through to make his way home. Well, one particular day, the trucks weren't paying attention to the sidewalk and a dump truck came flying up and collided with this young man on his bicycle. And before it was over, a once healthy and whole young man had his entire ankle shattered beyond repair and his foot completely crushed. Doctors evaluated, surgeries were scheduled, and after operation or two, they, they realized they were fighting infection and the potential for gangrene and other things were setting in. And so they, they, they told him, we're going to have to amputate your leg below the knee. You're going to permanently have one leg and one amputated leg. He smiled and said back to the doctor, I, it's okay because it's only temporary. The doctor, quite concerned, said, well, let me, let me get a hold of a psychiatrist to come in and talk with you and help you understand and explain how you're going to be without your leg and so forth. He said, no, no, I understand. I understand that in this body, I'll never have my leg again. The rest of this life, I'll live without that leg. But you see, I... I've been to Sunday school. I, I remember hearing in church, and this body is temporary. I have a new body coming in God's kingdom. Oh, the faith and strength of that young man was so beautiful. And I, I remember him coming to school in his wheelchair. And they talked that in several weeks he'd be going back to the hospital where they would fit him and train him and prepare him to walk on an artificial leg. Well, the day came and he went there and got through all that. And then the first day arrived when he would return back walking on his new limb. You know, he, he, he stumbled and walked in and his balance was a little bit off and he was a little unsure and he kind of staggered. There he was functioning, but limping. I wonder about that functioning, propped up, but limping. How many are feeling that way today? You're propped up, but there's something hurting where you've had a great loss. For some, it's a physical injury where you've been wounded and in some way, something that you had was, was taken from you. Like the apostle said, this 
thorn in my flesh. Three times I begged God, let it depart from me. But God left his mercy instead. Some with physical injuries, yes, but some with the injury of a loss of a loved one being torn away from them. Just this week, one of our dear members said goodbye to his dear wife as she parted from him through the doorway of death. Oh, how hard it must be and how difficult that journey to go on without the one you loved. Some feel the loneliness of this isolation that we're all in. Your house gets smaller every minute. You're dying to get out, to be around others again. One friend told me on the phone today, I just want to come back to church and remember what it was like when people would hug me. Oh, it's hard what we're going through right now. and Things are difficult and times are tough. But you know, in the Revelation, God would use one who went through great loss himself. John would say, as he brought us the revelation of Jesus Christ in chapter 1, the revelation of Jesus, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things. Might I remind you, God has a way of always showing us the right thing at the right time. You know, God will guide your eyes and your attention and your heart to the things you need to see, the things that will encourage you, the things that will help you, the stuff that will carry you forward on your journey, even as you're suffering. John would bear record of the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and all the things that he saw. And because John testified of Jesus, he was picked up out of society and set apart on this island to go live in isolation. God met with John in that lonely, broken and isolated situation. And it was there that God would give John the word and say, John, write down the things you hear, write down the things that you see, and send them to the churches. Churches that John would never get the blessing of going to. Churches that John would never get to be a part of. You know, as he was going through this, the Bible says in Revelation 1, under the seven churches, in verse 7, he said, I cometh in the cloud, speaking of Jesus' return, and every eye shall see him. Oh, you know, Christ who loved us so much, he's coming again, and we'll see him again. But in verse 9, John said, I also am your brother and companion in tribulation. Here John is hurting, lonely and displaced, unable to worship with the others. And John has this beautiful word from the Lord. But in verse 10 he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. No matter how alone you are, he hath said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. No matter how much you're hurting, no matter who you're separated from, you can in the Spirit of God be one with him and know the rejoicing. God brought the revelation to a hurting one and he wrote it to us. Oh, how our Savior reaches out to the hurting today. He said, I know thy works in Revelation 2. I know thy works, tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. For none of those things which thou shalt suffer, behold, note that the devil will cast some into prison, be faithful and I'll give you a crown of life. Oh, my friend, he talks there in chapter 2 about the works, the tribulation, and the present poverty. Many have started out on a work for God. You're a minister of the Lord. You serve to do a work for your God. And the work, as hard as it is, and as much as you've given your all to it, you've been met by tribulation. Things have gone against the work that you're doing. Things have gone contrary to what you'd want to see them go. God said, I know your works. I know how the adversary is fighting your works. And I know that the results of your works are not what you wish they were. You have this poverty. But he said, remember, you're rich. Remember, you're rich. We tend to measure things in right here and right now. But we forget the ultimate victory is coming. 
It was Churchill who said during World War II to England, we shall never surrender. Never, 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 no, never surrender. My friend, our works will go on for God in spite of the setback, in spite of the tribulation, in spite of the poverty. We will do for our God, knowing it might look like it's not working out now, but we're rich in God's kingdom. Keep going, my friend, for several reasons. First of all, in Revelation 3, where Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open up, I'll come in and sup with him. Hey, keep going because God is still drawing souls to himself. The Holy Spirit is still calling women and men and boys and girls to call on the name of Jesus Christ and be saved. There's one more soul to be reached. There's somebody else to be touched. So in the midst of the present pain, in the midst of the tribulation, Keep on going because people are going to come to Jesus Christ and be saved. In Revelation chapter 4, he talks about how the Savior is worshipped in heaven. In heaven, they don't stop day and night. They say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And they gave him glory and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. No matter our present loss, no matter our hurt, no matter what we're going without, we can keep going because there's more souls to be reached. We can keep going because God is still on His throne and the one thing that hasn't changed in our world is that He is still worthy, well-deserving of our praise and adoration. Then, of course, as we know, in chapter 5, John said, I, I wept much. He wept much in verse number 4. Here John is receiving the word of God, being handed the revelation, but still in his hurting, isolated place. The tears began to flow down his cheeks. I wept much, he says in the scripture. Some of you have wept much, but let me remind you, weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. My God says I'm so intimately tied to your hurting. Your very tears are kept in track. I know how you've cried. And as we cry and we endure the things that we go through, we're reminded that the Savior is with us. And there's many going to be reached for the kingdom of God. In verse Number 10, it says, He has made us to our gods, kingdom and priest, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, in verse number 11, and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the elders, and the number of them, the number of them, the redeemed of Jesus Christ, was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands on top of that, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature in heaven joined in in proclaiming that as they worship the Lord. Oh friend, might we worship the Lord who carries us on to victory because we know what is to come. We can be encouraged because souls will be saved. We can be encouraged because He alone is worthy of our praise. And we can be encouraged because we know what's coming in the end. Oh, sooner than we think, the Lord will return again. As the old hymn writer said, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon His face, the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land oh what a day glorious day that will be while well, europe rejoiced that war was over there war still continued in other parts of the world indeed it was a victory half won and in our lives we have the victory 
half won, for we still war against the things that are in this world. But let me remind you, the day's coming sooner than you think. One particular evening years ago, when our son was but a baby, he started to cry and fuss in his crib, and since I was already up, I went over and began to walk down the hall to pick him up. His little ears hearing someone approaching, his cries muted softer and softer, and as his door opened and I came in his room, his crying almost completely ceased. Then when I picked him up and cuddled him in my arms and began to rock him, he felt the assurance and the happiness of not being left in that bed anymore. He was out of the crib. He was in the arms. But as is natural, he could sense and smell and feel that he was not in his mother's arms. He was in his father's arms. Though the rocking helped, it didn't feed the empty stomach. And the little whimpers began to come back on and the crying began to come back on. As I walked slowly towards his mother, the crying continued. But then when he heard the words of his mom's voice, come here, baby, the crying began to go back down. Friend, we might be comforted in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, but may our pain and our grief and our loss settle back down when we look to see what God has for those who love him in the life to come. May you be encouraged today as we labor for our Lord in the partial victory that God's given us so far. God bless you.